Hi guys, Steph here. Now we've got a lovely interesting pen from my recent pen acquisition. You can see it comes in the original box and by looking at this box I can tell it's quite an early box so hopefully we've got quite an early pen. So let's pop the pen and the contents on the desk. Let's show you the bottom of the box there you've got the pen at the bottom there and it gives you some tells you fill here directions or whatever print oh the directions are printed on on the base or the top of the box um, and it's got instructions to the top here so it's telling you to fill remove the uh, the point and unscrew the section after filling sorry I'm trying to read over the camera after filling the reservoir to within half an inch of the top, replace the sections, etc, etc. And then it says it's ready to use. Now it also says when, uh, when, first, when first filled, the ink may, and then it says something which I can't read, and then it says, or flow freely. So when it's first filled, it might, I don't know, as we've said in other videos, it may blob. Or as it says there, it may flow freely. Now, then it says, when the interior becomes thoroughly saturated, this will correct itself. So there we go. So, you know, maybe these particular pens had a couple of little issues when you start writing with them. But there you go, it's telling you it should correct itself. So let's put the box to one side. Uh... Inside the box, what we've also got, there you go, the original eyedropper tube. As you can see, the sort of rubber bulb to the top is missing. But look at that, the original eyedropper tube, never been used. Uh, it's made of glass, so obviously it's very, um, very fragile. So if you used to get a little bulb to pop on the end there, you would have, as near as damn it, the original eyedropper for this particular pen now let's have a look at the pen look at that ladies and gentlemen absolutely gorgeous now this is not a vintage pen this is nice and simply it's an antique fountain pen it's actually the barrel imprint, well when I say it's an antique pen, first of all it's made of black hard rubber, it's got this lovely sort of chasing pattern which is very pronounced, which is absolutely, in my opinion, is absolutely amazing, you know, due to the age of this pen you can see all the chasing there, it's, it's like a, a large sort of chevron pattern to the barrel there. You can also see we've got a gold a gold band to the end of the barrel we've got a gold band to the top of the barrel we've got a gold band to the bottom of the cap and to the very top there look at that absolutely beautiful we've got what they term as a ray well a re repu repousse excuse my pronunciation a repousse cap finial to the very top there and look how ornate it is. None of these gold bands are actually marked as such, but for that age of pen, who knows? They they may actually still be solid gold, but they're not actually marked as such. So all in all, superb pen. The age of this pen, as I say, it's an antique pen. Um, I'm dating it maybe even before... 1900s um, what I'm going to do let's show you the barrel imprint first of all and let's keep it sort of nice and still so it's legible and you may be able to read the barrel imprint there okay what it actually says it says the swan pen now the earlier models were actually called the swan pen as opposed to anything else so we do know by the fact that it says the swan pen it is very early what you may also see there it's got three patented dates um the first one october the second 86 march the 6th 88 july the 9th 95 they are not 1900s they are 1800s so the very last 
um, patent date being July the 9th, 1895. So just underneath as well, if I turn it round, you will see it also reads Maybe Todd and Bard, New York. So the fact that it's a Maybe Todd and Bard, um, again, indicates to me it is a very early pen um, before the Maybe Todd and Company Limited, etc. So I'm dating the pen from the last patent if you like 1895 onwards so it may be the 1800s or even the very 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 beginning of the 1900s so very much a antique fountain pen it's a long and slender pen from the top of the cap to the bottom of the barrel 134 millimeters capped around the diameter of the barrel around about nine millimeters in diameter so <coughs> excuse me as i say it's a long and slim fountain pen um i've not mentioned it but as you'll see in a moment this is what they term as an eyedropper fountain pen incidentally another thing i've actually just not shown you um to the end of the barrel if we show you like like so Okay, I'm hoping that's clear. You'll see it says 3212, so that may actually be the model. And then underneath it says TU. Now the TU, I believe, on some of the pens they had what they had a, what they termed as a turned up nib. So, you know, when you see in a moment, this one doesn't have it, but um, the TU, I, I believe, may indicate... They used to use what they termed as a turned up nib. Now if I turn it over a little bit more. And show you another imprint to the bottom there. The imprint reads PL-S. Now to be quite frank, frank with you. I've no idea what that actually means. So if anybody knows get back to me. It'll be appreciated and we can learn something. And all the viewers can learn something as well as i say all in all absolutely stunning i can't i can't believe how how good condition this pen is for the age it's in beautiful beautiful condition we've also got a swan logo to the very top of the cap there we've got a couple of little marks to the to the end of the cap which well you know nothing to worry about but I would say can be forgiven for the age of the pen. Let's take the cap off, which as you can see is what we term as a slip cap. Let's do a few twirls for you. What I've actually done, it didn't need a lot of work. All I've done is cleaned it internally. I've cleaned the feed, etc. Um, and to be honest with you, just really just giving it a nice wipe over. It's in absolutely brilliant condition. You can see the section there is quite a long section. It's got a slight taper towards the nib. And what you'll notice straight away there, what we've got on this pen is what they term as an over and under feed. You can see the feed to the top of the top of the nib there. And underneath, again, if we turn it over, you can see the feed underneath like so um, you can't see it because it's hidden by the feed but the nib just simply reads maybe Todd and Company New York so again it's a New York made fountain pen with a New York nib let's show you a sideways view like so absolutely gorgeous okay so as we said earlier, this is what they term as an eyedropper fountain pen. So what we do, we unscrew the cap, uh, not the cap, sorry, the barrel or the section. And that's what you'll find inside. Obviously, there's no sack in these pens with them being what they term as eyedroppers. But what you'll find in these early pens, let's give it a close up. You'll see it's got this silver twisted wire 
which I believe sort of helps to regulate the ink flow to the pen okay you can see that to the top there I don't know if you can actually see it but just underneath there to the to the ebonite feed uh, let's keep it nice and still and just give it a little bit of a tod, uh, a twirl but the feed itself is also marked maybe Todd and Bard so even the feed itself is is very very early so there you have it there as I say it's an over and under feed and that simply sits inside there the barrel gets screwed back on the, the, the barrel screwing on is actually although I've covered it with a slight bit of uh, silicone grease it's it screws on nice and tightly okay I'm going to do something different because um, I've had a look at the nib already and it's got an absolutely gorgeous flexy nib on it so what I'm going to do I'm going to readjust the camera I'm going to fill the pen up and then as we've said to you in other videos what we do you get an eyedropper if you had one and you would simply take the section off and fill the pen as it says in the instructions fill the pen inside with ink and then screw it back and away you go um, but what I'm going to do I'm going to readjust the camera fill the pen with some ink I'm not sure how it's going to write because when I was actually servicing the pen um, and I was looking inside the section um, there is quite a gap you know inside the section so I'm not really sure how it's going to write don't forget it's over a hundred years old I believe when this pen was made and sort of sold if you like there were people out there maybe still using a quill to write with so that's how old this pen is so how it's going to write I am not sure all I know it's got a lovely flexi flexi nib um, it'd make a lovely pen to dip and write I feel personally um, this pen is a, is a collector's pen and it should be collected and displayed whether somebody wants to actually write with it well that's you know totally up to them but again it's a, over a hundred years old it's an quite a fragile pen as well but okay I know you people like to see them writing so what I'm going to do I'm going to come back readjust everything and let's see it writing <coughs> okay so we're back now so what I've actually done um, as I say I filled it with ink uh, it blobbed a couple of times I've actually sort of kept it in my hand so it's actually warmed up a little bit now so well let's see how it writes so what we've got is um, right there we go so we've got a bit of blob in there but if we carry on okay I'm going to try and do some some writing the the nib actually is very very flexible although it's flexible um there doesn't seem to be sort of any variation on the line so it's actually quite a difficult pen to write with so let's do the figure of eights right so as I say it's, a, it's actually a strange strange experience so there we go on the downward stroke we can get a broad line and there you go it's now sort of skipping a little bit so it's a very strange experience Um, 
very strange. It's writing with a fine line um, with this sort of quite a flexy nib and very very <laughs> it's actually a very strange pen to write with. When I say strange I've got quite a heavy hand there we go it's writing upside down I've got quite a heavy hand it's it really doesn't suit me because of the flexibility now if I can just show you there we go got a little bit more blobbing again which again I would say is quite sort of normal with these pens but all in all as you can see we're getting a broad line and then a cross line like so it's actually so flexible it's actually quite difficult to write with um, it's obviously an acquired taste for somebody who knows how to write with a flexi pen so I'm going to leave it at that um, as I say it's over a hundred years old so in my opinion it deserves to be in a in a collection on show on display um, as a writing instrument whether you want to use it or not that's up to the uh, to the owner but I hope you've enjoyed looking at the pen as much as I've enjoyed showing it to you people leave a comment down below don't be shy but for now from this over a hundred year old pen I'm going to say bye bye for now